What is up guys? I'm going to show you two ways that you could eliminate the wind noise from your light bar. Alright guys, so if you're like me, um, you're probably very excited about getting uh, these uh, light bar mounts. These are the DV8 for the Jeep JL. And let me tell you, they are kind of a pain in the ass to install. They are decent, they are pretty good, but the, the fact is that they did have a bu they do have a bunch of design flaws. And I feel like any light bar that you're really, or light bar mount that you're really gonna get is gonna have a bunch of design flaws in it and you're gonna have to mess with it to try to figure out your own way how to make it work. Again, if you were like me and you were all excited and you got your um, light bar mounts, you mounted up the light bar if you guys take your Jeep actually off-road. As soon as you went for a drive, I am almost certain that smile went away and you got hit with a frustration because of the intense wind noise and the whistling. And if you have a soft top, it's even worse. If you have a hard top with no insulation, it's pretty bad. Insulation in the hard top really doesn't help, uh, to be honest with you as far as uh, the light bar wind noise goes. I am gonna show you a couple things about the DV8 mount, and this is gonna work, it, it really works on any sort of uh, light bar mount uh, for the roof. I did the same solution on my previous F250 when uh, I had the light bar up top, and it was, it was basically the same issue, it was unbearable, and if you really have to drive for a long time, like we take this Jeep uh, everywhere, it, it, it's pretty frustrating. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I had to do to actually mount these DV8 um, light bar mounts. And I just basically, uh, I'm working on setting it up so I don't have the wind noise because it, it was absolutely terrible between the whistling and the, the thumping from the wind. It was unbearable in the cab to, to actually drive it for even like a half an hour or whatever. So the first thing that I had to do was I had to figure out how to mount these uh, mounts so they're not actually touching the paint because uh, DV8 does not provide you with any sort of inserts in here. They really don't give you any hardware and I think that's one of the biggest design flaws on this. I think they just kind of put together something that'll fit and they rushed it out to the market when the Jeep JL was announced and uh, as soon as it came out to be basically first on the market and have something that looks pretty decent but there was a lot of things that they didn't test for and they just kind of left it at that. Um, in my opinion, these are overpriced because of what they provide. I did have to get longer hardware over here in order to be able to mount it because the factory uh, bolts that are provided here, they didn't reach the threads once I put it in. And since I wanted to actually even space it out slightly more, that kind of made it even worse. So I had to get new hardware for it. Uh, some people actually use the long bolts from the door hinges, which I really don't recommend. I mean, you can just buy yourself some hardware. It cost me like $3.50 or something like that for a bag of uh, hardware. And then the other thing that I used, and I'll try to pick it up on here. So I use these little cabinet door stoppers. They're silicone. And essentially what I did was I went two over here by the top bolt. I went two over here and then I did also one here and then on the bottom here I went here here and here so what happens is the silicone bump stops sit against the paint to provide a gap in here not touching the paint whatsoever on any corner or anywhere because from the vibration it will rub through the paint and it'll basically if you decide to actually take these off you'll be screwed um, so the other thing I had to do was use these uh, same style silicone stoppers in here. They're, these are actually slightly bigger. Um, they're like these square ones that you can find at Home Depot or whatever. Just something for something to set up against the paint to eliminate vibration from these. And right now, I mean, they're solid. They don't even move. All right, so besides the mounting issues with the DV8, 
Um, the finish on it does kind of suck. It does chip away fairly quick. Uh, our plan is to possibly powder coat these white so to match the actual Jeep later on. But since it's like 27 degrees outside right now, uh, that's uh, I'm just gonna deal with it for the winter and whatever. I feel this is actually double powder coated. So the way the way that they've done this is they have powder coated black um just like a gloss black and i think this is where the issue comes in because it is powder coated gloss black underneath this shrink uh or whatever it's called um wrinkle finish so they put the wrinkle finish on top of the powder coat that's originally on there and that's what causes this to not adhere very well uh, so that's that's my take on the DV8 light bar mounts. They are decent. They are overpriced though. And if you're willing to put some time and effort into it, into mounting these up and actually trying to make these work, it is possible and it is doable. So for like even the little holes in here, like the back side of it, I put some um, fabric tape on it so that when it sinks into the hole, it's not chipping away or eating away at the paint in here. Um, and if it is, over time i mean it's not a big deal and then i guess the other thing is if you really don't care about you know kind of screwing up your paint under this and you're going to keep this for a while um then i guess you really don't have to space it out and go that extra mile the so the biggest issue is the fact that and i'm i'm already messing with it so basically i kind of worked it out already um the biggest issue is i'm running a single roll light bar uh, if you're running a double roll light bar it's essentially the same problem when the wind hits the windshield and what happens is it takes it between the light bar and that space gap that you have in here between the light bar and the and the windshield or the roof this creates a drag that kind of pulls down onto the roof and this roof line right here where this rubber seal is this starts whistling and you actually start getting a vibration from the light bar because of the resistance pushing up on it. It'll start vibrating the light bar with the wind noise. You get a crazy vibration. So there's a couple things obviously that you could do. The first thing that I'm going to suggest, you are going to have to cut the slide bar if you don't want these like horns sticking out. Um, what I did was I measured to bring the light bar in as close as possible to this line right here. Not the actual windshield line, but like that little stick out bump. So that was my goal and I got pretty close. If you look in here, it's probably less than a quarter of an inch. Uh, maybe, I would say maybe an eighth of an inch or so away from the, from the actual line. And I drilled new holes in here and pushed the light bar back. I made a template of the actual um, mount um, so I could transfer it over to the other side and measured it out and drilled my new hole right here. Took the same template, went to the other side, marked it, drilled the same hole and brought the light bar in. Uh, what I do want to do is use the same template to kind of trim this light bar mount down to where uh, it's not sticking out and it's more flush with actual light bar. Uh, and so obviously before I started cutting, uh, I went for a test drive and I wanted to see what the difference is going to be. And let me tell you right away, I got up to 80 miles an hour and it wasn't anything nearly at all of what it was at like 60 miles an hour. It was, it was unbearable. I really don't know why they went this far. It's kind of a design flaw in my opinion. You really don't need to go this far. I think maybe what they were trying to do is prevent the windshield glare. Um, if you have a decent light bar with a decent uh, beam, you shouldn't have an issue with any glare or even on the hood. And I'll show you uh, what that looks like when I turn the light bar on. There's absolutely no light hitting the hood and after I've brought it in, it doesn't change anything as far as beam pattern or how it reflects off your windshield or anything like that. All right, so I shut the lights off in the garage and I turned on the light bar and you could see where the beam pattern is. If you come down to the hood, there's literally nothing. So if you look at that little glare right here, 
that's where the beam pattern actually starts. And as soon as I dive down here, it kind of kills it. So it's essentially the same thing on the hood. If you look where my hand is, you go up and this is where the beam pattern starts right here. There really isn't a reason why they brought this so high up and so far out. Um, it doesn't make any sense for me. Not really sure what the design thoughts behind that was, but in my opinion, it actually looks a lot better when the light bar is a lot closer and lower. So it kind of blends into the Jeep. All right. So the other way I know that it works to fix the actual wind noise. And I'm not talking about like the actual whistle from like the fins that you get. You could pack it in here with uh, like little foam or whatever. They have like the weather strips so you could shove it in here. And I have a bunch in there right now that is really, I mean, that's just for the whistle um, or that hum that you get from the wind noise. And that's not exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to that. What, uh, what I'm talking about is the actual wind noise and the wind vibration it, and not just like that high pitched hum that you get. So the other solution for the high pitched hum is get yourself like uh, door edge savers. They're like a couple of bucks on eBay or whatever. And what you do is you just slide them on here on the fins as you would on the edge of the door to like protect your doors on the edge. That's something that'll stop that whistle. But as far as the wind noise, this is the solution that um, is gonna stop it, is closing this air gap between the windshield and the light bar. The other thing that you could do is, if you're unwilling to start cutting the light bar and reshaping it and all that, if you're not comfortable with that, there is another way that you could do it. So I have a big sheet of plexiglass right here that's actually cut to the length of the light bar. And what you do, this is actually too long as far as this goes. What you can do is use a piece of plexiglass or even a piece of aluminum. Um, and what you're gonna do is just shove it in between the fins, but you want it the length that it's gonna be as close as possible to the, to the roof line. Um, again, this is gonna help close that gap. So there are drawbacks of actually using plexiglass. Uh, versus moving the actual light bar. This will work. Um, I actually try this. The reason that I have this piece cut is because when it was over here, my first thought was the easiest route was to use a piece of plexiglass cut so that it sits closer, it'll close up that gap. So I did test it with this and it worked. The only issue is no matter how tight, unless you drill more holes, um, and if your light bar has uh, like the set screws for mounting locations or pitch, I should say. Um, what's going to happen is at 50, 60 miles an hour, the light bar is going to start pointing down because all that pressure from under here is going to start pushing on this plexiglass and it's going to start lifting the plexiglass and moving your light bar down. Um, that's, I mean, that's kind of a drawback unless you figure out a way to get the super tight and so it's solid and it doesn't move it. It's, it's one of those things, but the best thing that you could do is redrill and move it back. It was the same issue on my F-250 and I moved the light bar in as close as possible to close off this gap and it significantly, significantly lowers the wind noise. I mean, it's 80 miles an hour right now is the same as going 25, 30 miles an hour with the light bar out. So that's, that's kind of a no brainer. There are um, little things, little aluminum things that you could buy. Um, I think Z roads or whatever they're called has like a little insert for your led light bar. It's like 50 inches long. Um, it's a hundred bucks and it's a piece of aluminum that you actually have to drill through the fins and rivet it in. And I'll put a little picture or whatever in the corner of save yourself a hundred bucks and just move the light bar in. Arrow lids is actually making that weird shape thing that goes over the light bar, which I'm not a fan of because it's all gravy when they're brand new and they're nice and clean. But I have seen the actual arrow lids um, that are full of debris and just total crap and you constantly have to take it out, take it off, wash it. 
Um, you go through a car wash, it fills with water and soap and all that stuff. And it, it's just, I feel like it's a waste of time and it's like $150 and for a single road, they're not even out yet. They already announced it on their website that they're going to have the, the weird shape thing that goes over this. For, I know that for a regular light bar, they're like $150 or $130, something like that, which in my opinion is really unnecessary and is just hassle and it's going to make it look bulky. It's going to take away from that clean line look. Um, that's my opinion. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually not even going to take these off. What I'm going to do is cover everything up with a tarp and make sure that everything's covered up. I'm going to reshape the actual uh, mounting tabs on here and uh, we'll hop in and we'll go for a drive and you guys will see yourself the actual noise that, that comes out of it once I've moved the light bar in. So I'm done cutting and doing the touch up uh, bed liner finish on it. Uh, I just temporarily used like the Rust-Oleum bed liner style finish on it and I think it came out pretty great. So we'll go for a test drive and you guys will hear the wind noise. Uh, camera's pretty good at picking up all the noises but I think it looks pretty good and from the front it's virtually almost invisible really I mean you really can't see that there's a light bar on there uh, it doesn't stick out doesn't protrude crazy and it works perfectly I'm in the Jeep and here so I'm gonna set it up so you can actually see the speedometer and uh, we'll get going so right here at 20 miles an hour is when the whistling would start for me and there's absolutely nothing and I also don't have an insulated roof, so it is a hard top, but it's not insulated. So right now I'm cruising at 50 miles an hour and it sounds just like a factory Jeep with no wind noise at all. Um, and at 50 miles an hour with, with the way that it was set up from DV8, uh, I wasn't even able to, to talk really because it was so loud. All right, let's try to hit 80. So hopefully this video helped you guys out and uh, hopefully you guys will get rid of that wind noise and that headache that comes along with it. Also, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think and uh, let me know if it worked out for you, if you tried it and it worked out and I will see you guys later.